Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here with the 2018 Tinker from the German company Riesen Mueller. It's a compact bike that is maintenance free, adjusts to riders of any height, and is easy to ride since it rides just like a regular bike. As you can see, it is very compact, and we use a Gates carbon belt instead of a greasy chain. That makes it ideal if you need to store or transport your uh, bike in your car, your boat, RV, or if you want to bring it into your home or work. It's also perfect if you share a bike because it can be adjusted to fit virtually anyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to adjust and ride the bike. I'm going to talk about how it's maintenance free. I'll take you through the detailed specs of the bike and I'll take you for a ride test as well. You can find all the detailed specs, the current pricing, and you can even order online on our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll also find our contact info, so you can call or email with any questions or set up an appointment to come try it here in Ladysmith or take advantage of our Try at Home program where we'll bring e-bikes to you to try. So like all recent Mueller e-bikes, the Tinker is custom made in Germany. The quality, attention to detail and engineering that goes into each of their bikes is evident when you come and try it out. It is available in this one size fits all size and in three different colors. This is the black matte. It's also available in an orange and azure blue metallic. And here's the orange tinker. It's a great color, beautiful, nice and bright, and definitely is going to help you be visible while you're out riding. I really like the fact that we've got some nice black accents here on the uh, seat tube and uh, on the rack and uh, the orange really uh, pops with the contrast with the black. Just wanted to show you what the metallic blue tinker from Riesen Mueller looks like. It's always hard on their website to get a real sense of the colors. This is brilliant. It's beautiful. I'm out in the sunshine right now and you can see that metallic glint from the, uh, the sun. It's just a fantastic color if you're looking for something that's bright and uh, easily noticeable. And uh, this one just came in. We haven't got it set up yet, but I just wanted to do the quick video review to show you how nice that looks. And it's one of those things that you get the chance to come and see it in person. Uh, it's even more beautiful than the video shows. Okay, so I've moved the camera to uh, my body harness here so that I can use both hands to show you the adjustability. And you can see that we've got a couple of different things that we can do here. First of all, we can adjust the reach of the handlebars. That is how close uh, or far they are from the rider. And all of these adjustments can be made without tools. Um, we just open up the lever here and here. So we've got two levers there. Plus, we also have a pin right in here that you can adjust by pushing back on the lever here. That causes the pin to uh, go back in. And then you've got three positions here. So I can lock it in there. And once I close these latches again, it becomes very, very stiff. It doesn't at all feel like an adjustable stem. Sometimes you get uh, adjustable stems where over uh, time things loosen off and you're always having to bring tools along and tighten them. This is a tool-free adjustment, but it's also really, really very strong. So you can see um, now we've got the handlebars quite close to the rider. And if I want to adjust that, I just open up these two levers again and push in the uh, red tab here. And I can put it in a middle position or I can bring it all the way forward of the three positions. Again, lock those two levers down. And now you can see we actually have the handlebars quite a bit further away from the rider. So you do have uh, quite a bit of adjustability there in terms of different reaches. So I'll put again to the middle so you can see what that looks like. And that will do it again as close as possible to the uh, rider. And you can see that really does have a lot of adjustability. Um, even if you're not sharing the spike, some people like that adjustability because they like making those adjustments while they're riding. It helps with their upper body to uh, avoid uh, fatigue by uh, moving around into different positions. Not only can we adjust the uh, reach, but we can also adjust the height. So you can see we've got a quick release here like you'd find on a seat post and a uh, button here. And so we can push that in. That allows me to bring it all the way up to that height there, which is quite high. Uh, or I can bring it down quite a bit lower, all the way to the bottom here. And we just hear that lock in, close the clamp. And now you can see we've got this very low 
So um, my daughter, who is now 10, first started riding Tinker when she was 9, and she was able to adjust this so that it was close enough for her and low enough that she could get on the bike. Of course, the seat post also adjusts here. We've got a quick release on that. We can bring that down. And uh, right now we've got the uh, optional Thud Buster suspension seat post. If you needed this even lower, you could switch out to a regular seat post and then this would get quite low. So uh, I'm around six feet, I can ride this bike comfortably and my daughter who's now 10 can also ride it comfortably because we can very easily make those adjustments, which is great. Another thing you can do if you're transporting the bike, we open up this lever again here, push the button in and now we can actually rotate it. And if we open up these levers here and push the tab in, we can actually get the handlebars all the way down against the uh, top tube there. So if you are trying to get it into a fairly small size to bring it along in your uh, car or something like that, there's a lot of uh, adjustability. Again, tool free. And the great thing about it is once you've made those adjustments, it's rock solid. There's no um, nothing to get loose, nothing that needs adjustment. It just works. So as you've probably noticed, Tinker isn't a folding bike. It's very compact and it actually takes up the same amount of room as a folding bike, just in a different format. So this is more of a rectangular shape when you put it uh, in somewhere for storage, whereas a folding bike is going to be more of a cube. But the volume the bikes are going to take up is essentially the same. The big advantage of not folding is that the frame then is much, much stiffer than that that you would find on a folding bike. And that allows Tinker to ride just like a regular bike. That actually is one of the most common uh, surprises for people when they come try the bike. They're always shocked to find that you can ride it very aggressively. You can ride it just like a regular bike. It's very comfortable and very smooth. Part of that smoothness comes from the fact that we are using a suspension fork, which you don't often see on compact bikes this size with the 20 inch wheels. It's hard to find a uh, compatible um, suspension fork. Recent Mueller does have uh, have one here, so that's great. It really smooths out the ride. Um, we also get some um, comfort by the Schwalbe, the Big Ben Plus tires. These are actually uh, balloon tires, so they do have a high degree of puncture resistance, which is great. Um, we've got the Performance Line uh, Green Guard snakeskin, but they're also quite wide. They're about uh, 2.1 inches, I think 55 millimeters wide. And so that gives you a lot of traction, a lot of stability, a lot of control over the bike. Being a balloon tire, that means you can put a high volume of air in at low pressures. So this uh, pressure range here, we've got what, 30 to 55 psi. I typically run them uh, pretty close to 30, maybe 35. And what that does is that high volume air of air at low pressure allows the tire to really absorb a lot of the bumps that you would find in most uh, urban riding situations. In fact, Schwalbe did a study a few years ago that uh, showed that uh, balloon tires uh, are very similar in terms of their ability to absorb bumps and shocks in an urban environment uh, when compared to a suspension fork. So in Tinker you actually have both. You have the suspension fork up front, you've got these balloon tires which really help smooth out the ride. You've got the balloon tire on the rear and uh, of course you've got this optional uh, thud buster suspension seat post. I definitely recommend that upgrade. It really works very well. I've been really happy with the uh, thud buster. It really smooths out the ride. Um, helps to increase your confidence. You can maintain higher speeds when you're going over bumps and cobblestones and you know wherever you're riding even on trails. So that's a, a nice uh, upgrade that you can add. Um, of course if you need the seat post to be shorter then you may want to just go with a regular seat post but uh, it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade. Speaking of comfort, we actually have a really nice um, saddle here. Um, there's not a lot of things I would change on this bike. A lot of times I tell people, you know, when you come and try a bike, don't worry about the contact points because it's easy to change the saddle, the grips, and the uh, pedals. Uh, those are the, the points of contact with the bike. But uh, really hardly anyone changes the uh, saddle on the uh, Tinker because it is very comfortable. 
Going back to the tires here, I should mention that they do have a uh, reflective uh, sidewall stripe here, so uh, it really uh, helps to make sure that you're very visible in traffic. We even have uh, reflectors on the uh, front forks here, and uh, we have built-in lighting, and the lighting does run off of the uh, main uh, Bosch battery, which is great. On the back here, we also have a light with a reflector built into it and a reflector on the uh, rear fender as well to really keep you safe. And I love the fact that the uh, lights do run off of your main uh, battery here, so you're not having to worry about charging the lights. They're permanently mounted to the bike, so you're not going to forget them. If you head out uh, later in the afternoon and it gets dark earlier than you think, you have the lights with you, which is great. And uh, like I said, they are powered from the uh, main battery. Uh, again, another little attention to detail that uh, you'll find in the uh, German engineering here. The uh, light, the wiring you can see is actually running through the rack here and then uh, runs through the frame and to the Bosch drive. And uh, that's, I point that out because a lot of times the wiring ends up being run externally, uh, under the fender for example, and uh, that can cause problems. Running it internally like that really helps it to be protected. I mentioned this bike was uh, virtually maintenance free and really easy to ride and part of that is achieved by the use of the Gates carbon belt here. So rather than a chain that you have to oil and maintain, eventually chains will stretch and you'll need to replace them, especially if you have a cassette uh, and derailleur back here, uh, the chain then would be jumping up and down the cassette and that would wear it out, the cassette would wear out and the derailleur would wear out and all those things will have to be replaced over time. Uh, the carbon belt uh, typically lasts two to four times longer than a chain, so there's definitely uh, less maintenance that you're going to have to do in terms of replacement. It's a lower cost as well because you're not having to replace anything. Um, but really what it's doing is saving you a lot of time because you're not having to do anything after you're done riding. So, you know, I ride all year. Tinker's a great bike to ride in the rain. You've got the uh, full coverage uh, fenders and the little mud, mud flap on the back there. These wider tires are going to keep you really stable. Um, I don't want to get home and then have to worry about cleaning and oiling my chain. If you're bringing this bike inside uh, into your car, boat, RV, it's really nice knowing that, uh, you know, you can rinse off the belt if it gets dirty out riding, but you don't have to worry about grease or oil or anything like that. So from a maintenance perspective, there's really nothing that needs to be done other than, you know, keep your bike clean. It'll, you know, last longer that way, but you really, you don't have to worry about cleaning and maintaining a, a chain and cassette and derailleur. And so uh, it saves you time and it saves you money. Like I said, those are wear items that would need to be replaced with the NuVinci N380 hub back here. There's actually nothing that needs to be done for maintenance wise for it. And it won't need to be replaced either because it uh, won't wear out. From a riding perspective, this hub is fantastic. So not only does it mean that you're not worried about your derailleur uh, getting whacked by a curb or, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, if you're transporting your bike, you're putting it into your car or something like that, it gets hit and then the derailleur gets uh, bent and then things don't shift correctly. And, you know, it's really, it's it's not a lot of fun. And, and you will find with these 20 inch bikes, most of the time the derailleur is almost on the ground. Uh, with this hub, you don't have to worry about it. There's no adjustments, nothing's gonna go out of whack. You can put this in your vehicle. It's not gonna get damaged uh, as easily as a cassette or derailleur. So, from the maintenance perspective, from the longevity perspective, uh, it's a brilliant solution. For a folding bike, it's perfect. I would, I would highly recommend if you're getting or not a folding bike, a compact bike. I would highly recommend in a compact bike where you are moving it around, get a hub like the New Vinci N380. Now, not only is it great for all of those reasons that I just probably repeated a number of times. You can tell I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, from a riding perspective, the new Vinci system is fantastic as well. You can see we've got a little uh, cyclist here uh, going up a hill and basically it's a grip shift system. It's continuously variable, so there's no specific number of gears. There's an infinite number of gears between the easiest and the hardest. And while we're stopped, I can just twist this and see the cyclist now is on flat. So that's going to make it a little bit harder for me to pedal. If I see a hill coming up, I just simply give this a twist and see now the cyclist is starting to go up a hill, the hill's getting steeper, or the hill's not as steep. I simply adjust that as I ride. So with this uh, grip twist here, because it's an internally geared hub, I can actually shift while I'm stopped or while I'm riding. If the grade of the hill changes while I'm uh, climbing, I can simply adjust that as well as I ride.
Now, if you've ever ridden a regular bike and you've been in the wrong gear when you stopped, you'll know how awesome it is to be able to shift while you're stopped. If you have a, a regular chain cassette and derailleur and you have to stop suddenly, or you're just maybe not thinking about it, not paying attention, you're just enjoying your ride and you forget to downshift before you stop and you're in a really hard gear and it's really hard to start, you can't just use those trigger shifters and shift while you're stopped. It's not going to work. You're going to get terrible noise. It's not good for your drivetrain and it won't shift. With this N380, the new Vinci system allows you to shift while you're stopped. So you don't have to shift until you actually need to shift. So you don't have to worry about planning ahead of time. You don't have to worry about figuring out what the ideal gear is for the hill. You just go ahead and ride and as you're riding you make this adjustment. It's one of the things that it's hard for me to explain. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I love how easy it is to use. You really have to come and try it and almost all of our customers that come and try it just fall in love with it because it's so easy. They love the maintenance free aspect of it but they also love how easy it is to use. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the uh, Bosch system here in a moment. We're really fortunate here in Canada. Reese and Mueller is putting the Bosch Performance Line CX on all of their bikes. And the CX is the top uh, drive unit from Bosch. It has the most amount of torque, the highest amount of assistance. It's very responsive and we even have an adaptive mode, which is really cool. I'll show you that in a moment. Before I do that though, let me point out another little uh, interesting feature that just demonstrates again the engineering that goes behind uh, these bikes. Um, you'll notice that with a belt, you uh, can't break the belt to replace the replace it. If you had a regular bike with a chain and you need a new chain, basically you break the chain, uh, put it on, and then use a missing link to put the chain back together. Um, that doesn't work with a belt. So there's two solutions. One is to put a uh, break in your uh, chain stay here so that you can take a couple bolts out, take a piece out, pass the belt through, and then put the bolts back together. Uh, and that's what a lot of uh, bike manufacturers do. Reese and Mueller evaluated that and said, you know, that's not a great solution because now I have purposefully made a weak point in my frame. I don't want to do that. So they made an elevated chain stay. So you can see that the belt runs below the chain stay the whole time. Now, if you're wondering, like, what is this guy talking about? Go look at your bike. Your chain probably runs above and below the chain stay. This belt is running entirely below the chain stay. So that means if you ever need to replace the belt, it's really easy to do. Uh, loosen these uh, bolts, drop the wheel, put the new belt on, put the wheel back on, and you're good to go. Also makes uh, changing a flat tire really easy, but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen for you when you have these Schwalbe Big Ben Plus with the uh, puncture resistance. Okay, so let me talk about the uh, Bosch Performance Line CX here, and I'm going to explain why it's such a great system. Before I do that, I should mention we've got a nice uh, protector here uh, that covers the, uh, the belt and protects it. Um, it. it might be interesting to see if there would have been a way to put a uh, some sort of belt guard on but I've never had a problem again the belt is generally very clean and I haven't had any problems with anything getting caught in there so perhaps that's why uh, recent Miller hasn't done that with the Bosch Performance Line CX this is a mid drive that means that it's a very natural feeling because the motor is turning the belt which is just like uh, how a regular bike would be propelled, although maybe your bike has a chain instead. But the idea is that the weight is in the middle, the weight of the battery, the weight of the motor is in the middle, making the bike very balanced. And it feels very natural because as you pedal, um, the motor helps you out and it helps turn the belt for you. It also allows you to leverage the mechanical advantage of your hub here. So when you change gears on your hub using the uh, twist shift up here, maybe you're heading up a hill and you make it easier to pedal, that also makes it easier for the motor. So it's like having a transmission in a vehicle. When you change gears, it has an impact on the motor and that really helps you fly up the hills. And that's a really nice feature to have. With the Bosch system, you get a huge amount of torque, I believe about 75 newton meters of torque, and torque is what you need to climb hills. So a lot of times people ask about the wattage rating of the motor, and although that's interesting, what you really need to know is, gonna, is it going to get you up the hills? And with the Bosch Performance Line CX, it's definitely going to get you up any hill that you need to climb because it has a lot of torque. It's also very responsive. It actually measures your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, uh, measures your cadence, that is how quickly you're pedaling, 
and the speed of the bike. There's a speed sensor back there and a magnet, and it measures those three things a thousand times per second, and basically it's reading your mind. So if you are pedaling lightly, it gives you a little bit of power. If you're pedaling hard, it gives you more power, and the change is instantaneous. So even if you were to take Tinker, uh, you know, maybe even riding on a dock like this and you get to a corner and you don't want to end up in the ocean, you're going to naturally slow down. When you do that, the Bosch system is also going to slow down because it's essentially reading your mind. If you're riding on trails, this is ideal. I always give the example of going up a hill and around a corner at the top of the hill. You need to ease off of the power so you don't end up over the cliff. And again, with the Bosch system, that's going to happen automatically. It's just set it and forget it. Speaking of setting and forgetting it, we've got the uh, Intuvia display uh, panel up here. And one of the really neat things that uh, we've got now with the Bosch CX drive is we've got an adaptive mode called EMTB. So normally, right now, you can see my assistance is off. And I apologize if it's hard to see. I've got a protective film on the Intuvia display here. Um, to adjust that from off, there's a remote over here on the uh, left. That means you can make all sorts of adjustments without removing your hands from the handlebars. So if I press the plus, that's going to move me up to Eco. Eco gives me about 50% of my input power. It's uh, not going to give you a whole lot of assistance, but you'll certainly have tremendous battery range. Tour is the next level. It's about 120% of your input power, and that's really the level that a lot of people ride on. Um, you know, for a rider like myself, my weight and height on trails with hills, uh, I'll usually get, you know, somewhere around 60 kilometers on tour with this 500 watt hour battery. Now here's the neat thing is when I press plus and move it up to sport, the display says EMTB. I'll do that again. And EMTB was originally designed by Bosch uh, for mountain bikes. Um, they wanted mountain bikers to be able to just ride and not have to worry about adjusting the levels. But it actually works really well for anybody because what happens is now the bike will automatically adjust from tour all the way up to turbo which is the maximum level depending on your pedaling so if you're getting up to a big hill you start pedaling harder it's going to automatically boost you up to the turbo the great thing about that is when you get to the top of the hill and you go back to normal pedaling it's going to bring you back down to tour you do that automatically and that way you're not forgetting to adjust the mode. So a classic example I give is I'd move it up to turbo, climb the hill, and forget that it's in turbo. <laughs> and, you know, 20 minutes later, I'm like, wow, I'm going really fast today. What's going on? Oh, I forgot, and I left it in turbo. Which, you know, isn't a problem if you're on a, you know, 40 kilometer ride or something like that. But if you're trying to get long distances, you don't want to be riding in turbo and using your battery the whole time. So it's nice having that EMTB mode where it'll automatically adjust for me and I don't have to worry about remembering to make those adjustments. Of course, if you don't like that, you can simply go up to turbo yourself so you don't have to pedal hard up the hills um, or leave it on tour to extend your battery life. The Intuvia display is removable, so I can take that off and bring it inside with me. If you prefer to permanently mount it on your bike, you can do so. There is a little um, screw hole there that you can uh, put a set screw that comes with the bike through the bottom here and into there, and that will allow you to uh, permanently mount it to your bike. Uh, I like the fact that the Intuvia display will work while it's off of the bike, so you can check your stats, which I'll show you in a moment. And it also has a USB port here that we not only use for diagnostics, but you can use it to charge your device. The other great thing about the Intuvia display is it is compatible with the Kobe. Uh, you can check out my video review of the Kobe on our website at citruscycles.ca, and that allows you to use your smartphone to control the bike, and you can control your smartphone from the bike, which is very cool. So I mentioned we have a trip computer on the Intuvia display here. So uh, you can see right now we've got the clock uh, being displayed. I can either press the I button on the display itself or the I button over here on the remote to cycle through all the parameters. So you can see we've got maximum speed, average speed, trip time, the range, and this is uh, dynamically calculated based on the last few kilometers and the amount of battery that you have left. So on Eco, you can see I can get 117 kilometers. I drop it down to tour, it's saying based on the last few kilometers you've ridden and how much battery life you have left, you can go 60. I put it in that adaptive mode, it's saying 45, and then turbo down to 37. 
So that uh, range calculator is really useful. Uh, you do have a battery display up here that shows you the number of bars left, but I find more useful to be able to see the uh, distance left. We've got an odometer that shows you the total distance on the bike and your trip distance, which when you use in conjunction with your range is really going to help you know when you need to turn around and start heading back. Uh, also on the display here, uh, the Bosch system will suggest when you should shift. It actually has uh, shift recommendations. So if you're spinning too fast, that won't be efficient, or spinning too slow, that also won't be efficient. Neither for you nor for the motor. And so it'll actually do up and down arrows to suggest that you should shift. And that's uh, really useful as well. On the right side here, there's also a little graph that'll uh, light up as you ride, showing you how much assistance the motor is providing. To round out our discussion of the uh, Bosch system, I should point out we've got the Bosch PowerPack 500, which is Bosch's largest capacity uh, battery. It gives you a 25% increase over the previous year's PowerPack 400. And the neat thing about the Bosch system is the batteries are backwards compatible. So Bosch really has a commitment to longevity. They want to make sure that when you buy a Bosch powered bike, you're going to be able to get parts and service for it far into the future. And so they use a standard uh, battery here that's used on all Bosch powered e-bikes. So you're not relying on Riesen Mueller to provide you with the battery. This is actually a Bosch standard battery that uh, lots of different uh, bike manufacturers use. And so when Bosch said, hey, we can make a battery that's 25% more capacity, let's make it the same size. Let's make it backwards compatible. So if you'd bought a bike three years ago, you could still buy the newest battery and put it on there. And that's really reassuring. That helps you to understand that you know, you're going to be able to get new batteries far into the future. And uh, with the Bosch batteries, they are very clever. Um, we've got an integrated battery management system that uh, really helps to protect the battery. It uh, monitors the temperature, it monitors charging. And so it's not unusual to see uh, at least a thousand uh, full charge cycles on a Bosch battery before you see any uh, significant loss in capacity. Um, so that's uh, nice to know as well. Now the battery you can remove from the frame to uh, charge it. It is locked on the frame. You don't need the key to put the battery on, but you do need the key to remove the battery. Or if you prefer to charge it on the bike, there's a little charging flap here that uh, allows you to plug in a charger and uh, you can charge it on the bike that way. We've also got the LED display on the bike here on the battery to show you when the bike is uh, when the battery is off the bike how much charge is left and when you're charging it flashes to show you uh, the progress that it's at as well. So speaking of uh, keys for the battery, uh, the key for the folding lock is actually the same as the key for the battery. So it's nice that you only need one uh, key. And uh, let me show you how the folding lock works. I'm just going to switch to the uh, body harness here again so I can use both of my hands. Okay, hopefully you can see this. So this uh, folding lock, basically I can give the key a little bit of a twist here, push on this lever on the other side, and you can see a metal bar goes through the wheel here. And now when I remove the key, the bike can't be moved because of course the spokes are going to hit that metal bar. Um, this same key, like I said, is also used to remove the battery. But the neat thing is that, yes, this is going to prevent somebody from riding off with your bike. And that's why we call it a cafe lock. Because you wouldn't want to just walk away and leave it here permanently because somebody could actually just pick your bike up and leave with it. Uh, to prevent that from happening, on the other side here, I'll show you there is a, a hole for a chain. And again, it uses the same key that allows you to secure the chain. Okay, so here's the uh, hole for the uh, chain. Uh, there's a special uh, Abus uh, chain that we have that uh, goes into here and then allows you to wrap the chain around uh, a post or bike rack or something like that. And now not only can your bike not uh, be ridden away, but it also can't be carried away. So it's really handy that that chain, again, uses the same key as the frame lock and as the battery. Okay, and so let me take you through the uh, rest of the uh, components of the bike. Um, you notice we do have an integrated rack here, and one of the neat things is the rack is uh, a fair bit higher than the rear fender, and they did that so that uh, it'll accommodate any standard pannier bag without dragging on the uh, ground. So that uh, is, uh, again, just a nice uh, feature that allows you to put your pannier bag on there. There's pannier blockers, there's even a hook here. And if you didn't bring your panniers and uh, you need to bring something home, 
uh, on your bike, uh, we do have this integrated uh, bungee cord here, which is great. A lot of times in the past you would have seen a metal um, clamp with springs and it would have rattled the whole time you rode and drove you crazy. Uh, the bungee cord here is silent and it's expandable so we can adjust the uh, size. So again, just these nice little features. Um, the maximum load capacity here is 20 kilos and this is a rack time compatible uh, rack, which is cool because there's lots of rack time accessories that are available. And in fact, Reese and Mueller even makes some available when you order the Tinker. Uh, if you check out our website at citrusycles.ca, you can see a video review of the uh, cargo tray that you can get, and uh, you can also even get a, uh, an insulated box they call a pizza box that goes on the back here. And you can see they've really designed it well, so you're not going to collide with the uh, saddle when you put something tall, put a trunk bag or even that uh, insulated uh, uh, box on the rear there, and uh, it's just a really nice uh, integration. I already mentioned that we've got uh, fenders and of course uh, we also have the uh, kickstand and the kickstand is mounted on the back here so if you're moving the bike with the kickstand deployed it's not going to uh, collide with the uh, crank arms or the pedals. Um, while I'm back here I should mention that uh, because we have a, a belt and a new Vinci system we actually, Reese Mueller's designed the frame so you do have some uh, horizontal adjustments. So if you need to adjust the tension on the belt, you can uh, move everything forward or backwards, which is really cool. I guess while I'm back here, I'll also point out we do have hydraulic disc brakes. These are the Tektro, and of course that's an important feature. Uh, even on a bike this small, when it's an e-bike, you can get going at some pretty fast speeds and you want to be able to stop comfortably, quickly, and easily, and that's achieved with these uh, Tektro hydraulic brakes here that uh, really you could stop this bike going down any of the steepest hills here in Ladysmith with one finger on each brake lever. Now that we're up at the uh, front here, we've talked about the Intuvia display and the uh, Bosch remote. That bike does come with a bell, which is cool. We've got the uh, New Vinci N380 grip uh, er, twist shift here. Um, we do have the ergon, uh, ergonomic grips. They're actually really comfortable and uh, they are locking. I love that about the bike. It's just uh, very, very comfortable. And the fact that you've got that adjustability, you can really adjust the bike to be as comfortable as you wish. The uh, other touch point on the bike, of course, is the pedals. And uh, this is one of the very few bikes that I would not replace the pedals. I really like these. They actually are fairly wide platform pedals and they do have these plastic knobs here. So if you're riding in the rain, uh, you, your uh, foot isn't going to slide off of the pedal. And uh, I really like that uh, because a lot of times I've, I do ride all year. A bike like this, you could uh, ride in the rain, no problem. And so it's nice to have that extra little bit of grip there to uh, keep your feet on the pedals. Now, of course, uh, those are easily changed if you find that you end up hitting your shins and uh, hurting yourself on those um, uh, pins there, then of course you could uh, easily change those. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I missed. If there is, or if you have more questions, again, you can go to our website at citruscycles.ca. You'll notice that the wiring is integrated into the frame. It's a very nice, clean look. Uh, the black mat is quite uh, sharp looking. Um, I do love the uh, blue and the orange as well myself. And uh, I mentioned the accessories. Uh, you can find those on our website as well as the colors. If you'd like to uh, come try this bike, you can again head over to our website at citruscycles.ca and uh, in a few moments I'll take you for a ride test. So I've actually had a Tinker for a little over a year now in the store and I've used it for tours and uh, with my family. And I'm just trying to think through anything that I would change about the bike. Really the only thing I can come up with is, uh, you know, there isn't anywhere to put a water bottle on the bike. Um, that's not unusual for an e-bike, there's just not, not a lot of room for them. Now fortunately with the, uh, the handlebar post here being so long, that actually is a good opportunity. Um, we've got quite a few different options. We've got bags, for example, that can Velcro on there, you can put a water bottle in, or uh, straps that allow you to attach a regular water bottle cage. So those are some good solutions. From uh, my own usage, uh, we've actually used this bike quite a bit on tours and uh, people really like having it for the tours because it does have such a low standover height here. It makes it really easy getting on and off, which is uh, great for uh, people that maybe aren't comfortable with uh, riding an e-bike. Um, it makes it really accessible, easy to get on and off. We've also found that height adjustability is fantastic, so we have a lot of people that come on the tours 
that uh, are a little bit on the shorter side and they just feel a lot more comfortable with this bike. And even uh, taller people, um, for whatever reason, these 20 inch tires just give people a lot more confidence when they're uh, first getting on an e-bike uh, for doing a tour and they find that just being closer to the ground like that gives them a lot more confidence for the uh, ride. So that would be uh, my feedback uh, based on uh, having ridden the bike for about a year. For uh, further details, just uh, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. So as soon as you get on Tinker and start riding, you just know it's going to be a fun bike. It just uh, right from the get-go, it's, it's fun, it's maneuverable. You know, I'm kind of swerving around here just to get accustomed to the handling of the bike. Which is always a good thing to really just, you know, know what your bike can do and how it's going to handle. And uh, one of the things that I noticed right away, even with all the swerving, is that it does ride and handle like a regular bike. You know, a lot of times with um, a compact bike or folding bike with these 20 inch tires, it can be a little twitchy and you just kind of have to, you know, be careful and customize yourself to the bike. But with Tinker, right from the start, it just, it feels like a regular bike. A lot of people like these compact bikes because they are fun to ride and uh, they're very maneuverable you know it's really easy to get it in and around uh, traffic and things like that it's easy to store so there's a lot of appeal to it especially when it rides like a regular bike there's not a lot of downsides to it Cornering at high speeds isn't a problem. A little bit of a hill here, and of course, with the Bosch CX drive, it's not a problem to climb any of the hills. I'm going to come up onto some uh, rougher pavement here soon, so that'll be a good test. Uh, you know, it's nice that we do have the front suspension. That's unusual in a compact bike this size uh, with 20 inch wheels. A lot of times they have a rigid fork and they're relying on the tires to handle any of the uh, bumps. And the tires do help a lot. These are the Big Ben, uh, the Schwalbe. They have a high degree of puncture resistance. And they are balloon tires, so they're quite wide and you can put a high volume of air in at low pressure. And that really helps it to absorb a lot of the bumps. But certainly having the front suspension fork is going to help a lot as well. You know, it's a fairly specialized thing having the uh, suspension fork for the size of wheels. But I recently learned to find one and as I'm heading over this broken pavement with potholes right now, pick a line here with a whole bunch of bumps. <laughs> it's doing a great job absorbing them. It's actually, you know, quite impressive given the size of the wheels and the size of the fork, uh, how good of a job it can do in terms of absorbing those bumps. Getting some uh, loose gravel here as well. And again, uh, it's nice having the, the width on these tires because that's gonna help if you are getting into some loose gravel, it's just gonna help you with more contact area to uh, grip, and of course for stocking as well. And I'm really noticing the uh, Thud Buster suspension seat post. That is an option. I definitely recommend it. Uh, again, you know, you've got the smaller tires, so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult for the tires to absorb all the bumps. So you might as well put that suspension seat post on. I'm definitely noticing it's it's doing a great job. You know, because that can be a really rough section of road right there that I just rode and uh, it's nice and smooth the, the Thud Buster works well I'm actually really enjoying this saddle it's got uh, it's a gel saddle it's got a nice bit of cushion to it actually it's really comfortable 
Of course, the saddle is something that's easy to change. Uh, I wouldn't change the grips. They're very comfortable. And uh, actually, I really like these pedals. Uh, it's not often I say that on a test bike. I usually uh, change the pedals. But uh, recently, I put these uh, kind of platform uh, pedals with uh, plastic pins. And that's ideal because it just gives you so much more grip on the pedals if you're riding in wet. And um, yeah, they're really nice. got a fairly big hill here. Hopefully by now the GPS has found itself and will give you an idea of the gradient. Here's an example of where a compact bike is really nice and fit through those uh, barriers really easily. And you know it's nice feeling that it's a very maneuverable compact bike if I'm in traffic and I need to get out of the way quickly or hop onto the sidewalk. It's nice knowing that it's really easy to do that with this bike. So theoretically, with the smaller tires, you're actually going to experience more torque from the drive system. So I put it up onto turbo. I wouldn't have to for the hill. I can leave it on the e-mountain bike mode in the Bosch system as soon as I start pedaling harder. It's gonna put it up into the turbo mode for me. But uh, if I don't want to pedal hard and still make it up the hill, then I can just manually put it up into turbo. So trying to determine if it's any easier on Tinker with these smaller wheels going up this hill than other bikes and it might be a little bit I don't know it's hard to say it's certainly very easy you know 12 13 kilometers an hour I didn't even have to put it in my easiest uh, gear ratio in the new Vinci and very easy to come right up and put it back down to e-mountain bike mode to save my battery and it'll just dynamically adjust down to tour as it needs to and if I really pedal hard it'll move that up to sports and turbo for me it is a nice feature I don't have to worry about accidentally leaving it in turbo and using up all my battery mind you with a 500 watt hour battery you do have quite the range with this bike so signaling riding with one hand cornering not a problem sometimes on compact bikes a little hesitant to take both hands or even one hand off the wheel or the steering wheel <laughs> steering wheel handlebars <laughs> and uh you know no problem even heading down the hill here going over 40 no hands on the bars no problem at all pedaling past 45 with the gear ratio uh, I'm not able to contribute a whole lot, but up until there, it's not bad. You know, it, it feels fast. It feels fun. It's uh, the type of bike you got to come and try. It's the one that uh, this and the Nevo are the two recent Mueller's that surprise everybody because uh, they look at this and think, oh, you know, I'm not sure. And then they ride and it's like, wow, that's fun. It's like a regular bike. And the uh, Nevo being a step through also rides like a regular bike and surprises everybody. But yeah, if, if you're looking for something to uh, that's just fun, sporty, um, or you need something, you know, you can fit in the back of your car, or RV, boat, apartment, work, wherever. This is a great option. It's really comfortable. I love the adjustability with the uh, handlebar height and the stem angle. getting up to 50 having a tight corner here feels very confident uh, confidence inspiring no hesitation or concerns at all 
of this bike. Here's where it's nice having these narrower bars. And it is interesting that Racing Mueller, you know, really caught that through. So if you've got, uh, you're trying to get in and out of elevators or buildings or a narrow sidewalk like I am, um, you'll be able to get through no problem because they have put a little bit narrow bar narrower bars. So next I'm going to uh, head out onto a cycling path and then onto some hard packed gravel. We might even go on a little bit of a mountain bike trail just to see uh, how well Tinker handles that. So far handling everything very impressively. I'm really enjoying this bike. One of the things I'm really enjoying about the bike is it is a very comfortable riding position. Uh, it's nice being able to make that adjustments on the stem to bring it to the uh, right position, both in terms of height and in terms of how close it is to you. And um, it really allows you to be in a very upright position. It, it feels like you have a lot of control over the bike. The bike is being very compact. It just, it feels like, uh, it gives you a lot of confidence to really handle any situation, especially if you're riding in an urban environment where there's a lot of traffic. It's just nice knowing you've got a lot of control over the bike. It's also very comfortable being upright. I can see around very well. I'm uh, actually quite visible as well. If visibility is important to you, I'm riding the black uh, Tinker right now, which is uh, very nice, very inconspicuous looking. But uh, maybe the uh, metallic orange or the metallic blue might be better choices because then you really will stand out. And uh, they are beautiful colors. I really uh, like the blue especially. Climbing a bit of a hill here, we've got, uh, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell in the video, we actually have a lot of debris on the uh, pathway here. It's very wet and slippery. Uh, pine cones, needles, branches, all sorts of stuff. And uh, really, I haven't been paying attention to that at all. I just ride right over it in these uh, 12 tires. Handle it no problem. They handle the, uh, the wet quite well. Here's a curb. Didn't have to slow down for it. Just ride right over. Can even keep pedaling. I haven't had any pedal strikes either. Even pedaling while cornering. So it handles really well and you know I always talk about being safe on a bike and one of the things you can do if you're riding in traffic is try to be predictable try to avoid swerving around potholes or in this case pine cones <laughs> and try to maintain a, a steady pace and the more predictable you are the easier it is for motorists to avoid running into you which is always a good thing so that's the nice thing about having a bike with these tires, with the front suspension, even the Thud Buster seat post is helping so that you're not having to try to swerve around. Now, because it is such a small, compact bike, if you do need to dodge something, you know, you're able to do that pretty easily and get back on track. It's interesting, I had a customer come in today, try out a Bosch powered bike similar to this with the belt. And when they came back, they said, you know, I thought I would really hear the, the motor and I couldn't hear it at all. And that is one thing I, I noticed that some people are concerned about with the Bosch system is how loud is it? Um, you know, I'm what, 26, 27 kilometers an hour right now. And I can barely hear it over the noise of the wind in my ears. So it's not a particularly loud sound, but um, at times you can hear it, especially uh, if you're climbing a hill or something like that, where you're really getting a lot of power out of the drive unit. All right, so now I'm gonna head on to some uh, bumps and some loose gravel and, you know, Tinker as a compact bike just has so many uses 
Um, if you're on a boat or RV, you know, it's really nice getting somewhere and then just being able to go explore on your bike. And it's nice knowing that you could explore trails like this where we've got some hard pack gravel and some sections with loose and you know there's still a few leaves wet leaves and you know it's just it's handling it really well do some wiggling here again in the loose gravel and no problems at all you do a stop up here in the gravel and uh, I was able to lock up my rear tire there momentarily but it still maintained traction no problems coming to a very quick stop and that part of that is you know having these uh, disc brakes the hydraulic brakes respond very quickly You've got a lot of modulation in them so you can uh, control how quickly you're stopping some people like a compact bike like this because they're, they're closer to the ground and they feel more stable more secure so that when they stop you know if I do a quick stop here it's really easy for me to, to exit the bike because it's got such a low standover height. And that again is one of the reasons why people buy Tinker. You know, we've been really impressed with this bike. It's, again, like I said, it's kind of the surprise bike. I think it's one of our top two or three uh, bikes because um, it is so accessible. It's got the adjustability, you can bring it with you, uh, but it's fun, it's comfortable confidence inspiring and I think that low standover height making it easy to get on and off is really nice because it does encourage you to ride your bike more and to start exploring like on trails like this Mason Mueller does include a bell which is cool in fact really other than a pannier bag you don't have to add much to this bike you've got lights and a lock and a cafe lock and fenders and uh, you know I didn't even need to uh, provide you with much maintenance equipment because the belt doesn't require any chain oil I have to worry about that the new Vinci system is maintenance free so again it's ideal for people that just want to be able to ride the bike whether you're you know, in an urban setting, like I said, it's nice to fit it in your apartment or at your office and not worry about theft. Your house, your garage, uh, maybe you've got an RV or a boat. And then you can just hop on your bike and ride. Actually having a lot of fun. Forgot how much fun Tinker was. It's uh, loads of fun on trails like this. Well, perhaps you need a louder bell. <laughs> you know, and I'm actually able to cruise at a, a pretty good clip here. Even on this trail, I'm uh, heading up to 30 kilometers an hour sometime without that much effort. I am on the uh, MTB mode and bringing that down to tour. I do really like the uh, New Vinci CVT being able to just continually adjust that to find the perfect cadence. You obviously don't have to adjust it as much as I do. I'm just, you know, used to riding with it and making those subtle changes to find the ideal cadence. All right, we've got a windy section up ahead and a hill. I really love having the Bosch system for sections of the trail like that, where you just want a little bit of assistance. You don't want to end up you know, through the trees and over the cliff. And the Bosch system is very responsive.
I was going to say, you know, that I, I felt like I was going a little bit slower than, down that hill than I might on a mountain bike, which makes sense. This isn't a mountain bike, but when I was looking at the speedometer, I'm not sure that I was actually going much slower. It just um, perhaps feels a little bit quicker. So I'll head back up the hill. Here's some uh, mud and roots and rocks. And, uh, you know, for the occasional trail ride, actually is handling quite well even with these small tires. Yeah, no problem. Uh, I really like having the Pedbuster suspension seat post for that as well. So this is actually quite a steep hill. It's steepest right at the end. Not sure if the GPS and the camera can see through the trees here to the sky so we might not get a measurement on the screen or it might be wildly inaccurate. It often is. Uh, I think when I've done it before Right at the end here, we're close to a 30% grade. And uh, put it up into turbo, put it in my easiest gear in the New Vinci here. And not a problem at all to just climb right up there. So it is nice having that power. I know over in Europe, I think they put the uh, active line and the Nexus hub perhaps on the Tinker because in an urban environment, you generally aren't seeing hills like that you don't need quite the gear ratio i'm really glad here in canada that uh, we do get it with the cx drive that splashes mountain bike specific drive unit with the maximum amount of torque for climbing hills and i really like the 380 percent gear ratio that we get with the new vinci and of course the no maintenance and the belt it's it's really ideal and so it makes it a very versatile bike so maybe during the week you're using it to commute on the roads and on the weekend you want to go exploring on trails like this so this is you know fairly bumpy lots of mud roots rocks and uh, handling just fine now if your primary use for tinker was to go mountain biking well i better off getting a mountain bike but if you're occasionally doing stuff like this or even you know fairly frequently but need a compact bike you know it's handling this really well i'm really impressed with it it's actually a lot of fun i think that shorter wheelbase and you know the responsiveness of it just it makes it easy to kind of weave and corner and again uh, for some of our customers feeling a little bit closer to the ground gives you a little bit more confidence that if this isn't the type of riding you normally do you know that you're going to be able to easily put your foot down or stop and not likely to injure yourself, whereas on a full-size mountain bike you might. That was fun. It's nice having the power to just climb right back up the other side. And so it's nice, uh, you know, a lot of times with a compact bike, a folding bike, you are limited to where you're going to ride it. You don't take the shortcuts, you don't take the trails. Um, with the Tinker, you don't have to worry about that. You can go wherever you want. With the new Vinci system, you're not worried about uh, hitting your derailleur on a curb or on a rock. That's one of the challenges, you know, with uh, compact bike with the 20 inch wheels and you put a 10 speed or 11 speed on there even an 8 or 9 speed your derailleur is hanging so low to the ground that it's really easy with those 20 inch tires to you know hit a rock or over a bump and knock it out of alignment and then things aren't shifting correctly and so with this new Vinci CVT it's a hub that's uh, not going to get knocked around and even if it did nothing was going to happen it's not going to go out of adjustment so that's uh, that's a big plus in my books. But this is really fun. I'm really enjoying the Tinker. Um, you know, you've got the rack. Reese Mueller makes a couple of uh, cargo boxes. You can get a cargo tray, which uh, gives you a lot of capacity. You can get their uh, thermo box. I think they call it a pizza box. It's a massive insulated box you can fit. Uh, pizzas or whatever in for delivery and you know it would make a great kind of mini cargo bike mini delivery bike 
it's very agile, you can get around very quickly on it. Would be the great bike to have on a boat. You know, a lot of times when you're on a boat, you get to uh, port and uh, everything's uphill. <laughs> so having that power from the CX Drive to help you up those hills is awesome. Even if you live in an urban environment, it's just nice knowing you've got that power to help you if you need to uh, get through an intersection quickly or something like that. And with the EMTV mode, that is really nice because, uh, you know, if you are in a situation where you need to get through uh, an amber light or something, you don't even have to worry about boosting it to turbo. If you just pedal hard, boom, you're going to get that immediate assistance right away. So you can see I could accelerate from 20 to 30 in just a few pedal strokes when you're in that EMTV mode. So even though it's called uh, EMTB electric mountain bike mode, it has a lot of other great applications. Although you could use the Tinker as a mini mountain bike, it's pretty fun. All right, well, I'm gonna head back onto the road and I think I've given Tinker a good workout here on a variety of terrain just to give you an idea of what the bike can handle. It's very comfortable, I've really enjoyed riding it, it's a lot of fun. If you'd like to try it yourself, if you have questions, uh, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca.